Good day everybody, we're off out camping today. We're off up past Treecliff Cabin and Mam Tor along Rushup Edge towards Brown Knoll and then we're going to overnight on Horse Hill Tor. So that's a plan, first wild camping 35 years. So got the pack on, got one of those platypus water reservoirs with about two litres in but I think there's a stream where I am so we'll try out the uh, catch and 2B or B3, so 2B twat. Anyway I'll catch up with you a bit further on the route. Wow that's being kept clean. Makes you wonder if you see rubbish people put rubbish in it. But it actually is nothing there from the last time I came up a few weeks back. That's good. We're headed up here, just towards Mam Tor before we skirt along the Blue John. You've got the broken road there and the wonderful Hope Valley. Looking gorgeous. <coughs> it's bloody warm today. Must be about 25 degrees. So plenty of water. And that makes it all the worth the effort. The Vale of Edale, Mam Tor, the Hope Valley and Castleton, Abney Moor over there, Elden Hill, Coombs Moss, and we're headed along here to Lord's Seat and then we're going to be camping over there somewhere, just to the left of that cliff, I think, on the top. And there we are, Lord's Seat, a Bronze Age barrow. Look at the views. Back along down Rushup Edge to Mam Tor along the Great Ridge. Fantastic. I really hope tomorrow morning, camping over there, we'll get a cracking sunrise. But we'll see. This is almost all the climbing done now, thank God. About 1,400 foot, which with a 15 kilo pack, well, probably more like 17 with the water, is uh, some doing, mate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've fenced the barrow off now to try and stop people going on it. Not that I think that fence will do much, but that's the intention. And then we're just going to walk along until we meet Chapel Gate, bear a right, head over to Horse Hill Tour, and then set up camp for the evening. But yeah, four and a half thousand year old burial mound. Please don't walk on it. They must have been important people, these guys. Very important. Wonderful. Stunning day. It was rammed down there, which is why I haven't done much filming at all. But yeah, we're going to head along now, carry on along here. Some stunning light for the clouds there and the sun. That's, um, I always get this wrong, Colthorne Tunnel. I mean, that's a little like shepherd's hut type thing just before it. I might go up there tomorrow, so what time I go? I've got a bit of work tomorrow for nine. We're going to follow up the path up towards Brown Knoll, and then we're going to head off and uh, probably get some water from the clough here, hopefully, and then uh, spend the night on the top of there. So, yeah, stunning views, and I've not seen hardly a soul once I got past Mam Tor, uh, so that's always good. So, yeah, quite hard, that. Um, uh, 15 kilograms up there, mate. Well, 17 kilograms was that. Good best part of 35, 36 pound pack in it. So I'm going to have to look at um, the weight of everything. I think the pack itself weighs quite a bit. But anyway, we'll get fit, won't we? We're going to head up here now anyway, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Look at all this beautiful bog cotton. Look at it everywhere, stunning. All the way up the hill. I wonder what it was from a distance. It's beautiful stuff. Beautiful. I'm not sure if that um, last video took, so uh, yeah, some stunning light over there towards, I think that's Mount Famine, no, South Head that is, and you've got Chimney Churn and 
across towards the Goit Valley and Coombs Moss, but stunning light. Hoping we might get a good sunset tonight. Lovely flagstones these, they're from the old mill towns. Sheffield and Manchester, I think. You can see marks in them sometimes, foot marks, or where posts and poles have been inserted into them. But that's where these all came from. And they've used these to make the paths. So you're walking in the foots of grafters there, mate. Well, that'll do for a room of a view. Just going to try and find somewhere to camp. It's quite dry here, a bit tussocky, but I'll see if I can find a flat spot or just flatten it down a bit. Got the air bed and that. But yeah, you've got a view over towards Brown Knoll. Jacob's Ladder is going up there. I think, yeah, there's Edel Rocks. I think. Uh, that's definitely Grandslow Knoll there. Uh, um, and then we're down the Edel Valley and the Great Ridge, Lewes Hill, back to Hollins Cross, Mam Tor, Mam Nick, and across Russia Bed where we've just come around and over here. That was quite boggy, but luckily this is right at the top and it's quite flat. So I think this is looking like a good spot to pitch a tent. So I'll crack on with that. Bit of tweaking, tighten it all up. Stunning sunset, hopefully, in a bit. We'll see, but yeah, could get a brew on now, get a bite to eat, but not a soul up here. Just me and my tent. What a view, a brew and a view. Look at that. Cheers. You can tell it's been a while, <laughs> spilling water everywhere and uh, I seem to have underestimated how much water was in this thing. I filled it up to that line, should have filled it up to that line. <laughs> so I'll save that for tomorrow uh, for a brew and a bit of a drink on the way back and uh, I'll breakfast when I get home, I think. But yeah, just um, started a chicken keema curry. So that's been filled up with water and we'll leave that for 15 minutes. But yeah, I'm not gonna get much of a sunset tonight. Um, it's a big cloud where the sun's gone down, unfortunately. But uh, it's beautiful to see it set it over Lou's Hill over there. Hopefully we'll get a, a better, um, a better, what's the name? I just, I just thought I'd done that, yeah. So it's, this thing's okay, this Lachlan too, but it's so easy to turn up the volume and then your audio goes to crap. So I just noticed that I'd switched around, but yeah, I'll get used to it. But yeah, looking around Lou's Hill there, beautiful and uh, see Wynn Hill in the background looking really good and Derwent Edge etc uh, etc et so yeah stunning but for now we'll get stuck into this curry um, I was going to do some time lapse of the sky but it looks like it's going to cloud over so uh, but hopefully we'll get a decent sun sunrise in the morning because it will come up in that direction so we'll see we'll see what happens tomorrow do one last panorama before I head into the night and eat my dinner and settle down for the night. I don't think it's going to get much better now. You can see there's a big cloud over there that's going to make the sunset a bit dire. But yeah, the valley is starting to go into darkness now. Temperature's dropping. That's where we came up across Russia Pedge. So we'll be going back down there tomorrow. So we're going to head back up onto the path along Russia Pedge, back down into Castleton. It's about five and a half mile, I think. That was a good test of my fitness today. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to have to get a lot fitter, I think. I mean, I got here all right in the end, but I had to stop a couple of times. It's about 1,400 foot of climbing. Um, but at least tomorrow it's 1,400 foot of going downhill. So, uh, yeah, you know, all the climbing's out of the way now. It's all downhill tomorrow morning. So I'll get up for the sunrise, I think. And that should be spectacular if we're lucky. It depends how it uh, pans out. Um, but yeah, lovely view. I might see if I can get some night shots later into the valley as it gets dark. Uh, you know, you might get some cars coming down there and stuff, but it's quite far away really, to be honest with you. I'm a bit bushwhacked, so <laughs> I might just get my head down after I've had my dinner and get up early, get the sunrise and get back home. But yeah, really love that. Uh, first wild camp in 35 years. When I used to, since when I used to go out my Van Gogh Force 10 and my Phoenix Freak. So we'll see what sort of sleep we get. Last time I went out, because I camped just down here in uh, Upper Booth. Um, I didn't sleep that well, but uh, we'll see how we go on tonight. We're on a very slight slope, 
but uh, when I've been lying down in there, I've not been going, but I'm really impressed with this tent. It's very spacious inside. It ain't going anywhere, that ain't. Um, you know, I've watched Falman Dave, he gives a really good rating on this tent when you think about the price of it. It's about half the price of a Hilleberg. You know, it's probably good if you double pole it. If you watch his video, I'll put a link into it. He actually double poles it and then puts all his weight onto the tent and it doesn't give way. And he was about 87 kilos. So, you know, if you're going out in some severe sort of uh, stuff, then double pole it, mate, you know, and then it's rock solid then. I mean, it's rock solid for what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be going up Mount Everest or anything, am I? So, but yeah, look at that. You can see Wind Hill in the distance really standing out there. It's a really good angle. So, you know, I keep banging on about it, but I do want to do the EDL skyline, which goes all the way around here and then back around there. So once you're up, you know, it's, um, it's just plodding along, isn't it? You know, it's just a couple of buggery climbs up Wind Hill and Loose Hill at the hardest bits, I think, and Ponte Kinder, but other than that. But I think there's a few people camping over there. I could hear somebody yawping. I think Mr. Hengist, you're up here tonight, aren't you? Somewhere? I'll probably find out that he's over here by me. <laughs> but yeah, watch his channel, Hengist Wild Camps, mate. He knows more places on Kinder than anybody, I think. He's been doing it for years. Uh, really like his videos, and he always has a couple of cans of McEwen's Champion. And you know what? I might start bringing a couple of cans with me because I really fancy a cider for some reason. But. Uh, I've got about enough water for a cup of coffee in the morning and uh, some water to last me to get home. So I think um, I won't bother with the porridge. I'll just uh, eat some snacks and head back in the morning nice and early. So, yeah, goodbye from me on Horse Hill Tour. But, yeah, temperature's dropping now, so I'm going to get in and have this curry because it's almost ready. And then I'll probably get my head down for the night, to be honest with you. All right, so signing off, and I'll see you in the morning. morning. It's about five-ish now I think. It's five o'clock. I've been up since about quarter to four. But stunning. Look at that. It's worth going up for isn't it? I took some time lapse. I'll show that. We're going to pack up and head back over Russia Pedge and back down to Mamtor. Should be home for about eight, nine o'clock. So I'll catch up with you later on. What a fantastic camp that's been. As always, leave no trace. Just a bit of a flat grass, just going to check for pegs, make sure I've not left anything anywhere. One good thing about the Vern 1 pegs, they've got bright yellow tape on them. 
and uh, I've also noticed a zipped club at night. <laughs> There's just lots of little things like that and the guy rope elasticated thing and everything else. But yeah, that was a stunning little sunset. It's warming up now. Look at that cool cloud there. Let's get a picture of that. So yeah, all the clags cleared off kinder now. I've got some really good footage of that piling down the cloughs and whatever. But yeah, we're gonna head back over here now. Yeah, I really enjoyed that camp. Um, I never sleep well when I'm out, don't know why. Um, Round to the bloody Manchester um, flight path here, I tell you now. I, all I heard all night was bloody planes. And uh, yeah, I didn't really sleep that well. I never do, it's just one of them things really. Uh, but yeah, enjoyed that. Again, used to point a tent up and down quickly. Well worth coming up here just to get that. Look at those, uh, I think they're lenticular clouds there. Almost like circular. So I'll get some pictures and start heading back home and uh, yeah, get back to work. Back on the flags now. And we'll just follow this down to Chapel Gate and left down Russia Edge. You can see the old Colthorne tunnel there. Um, I probably got that wrong again. But anyway, that tunnel, that's a vent. Uh, Hills Outdoors Adventures, I think he's called. He uh, camped by that. And he actually heard a train go underneath, which is quite cool. But yeah, look at them clouds. I'm sure they're lenticular clouds. Stunning. I tell you what, I probably won't see a soul. Uh, I'm Monday morning, it's six o'clock. <laughs> Everyone will still be tucked up in bed or at work. Cotton, as far as I can see, following the path we're walking up there. How cool is that? This is uh, Chapel Gate, which is the old uh, path from down Edale up to Chapel on the Frith, going back to at least medieval times, possibly older. A lot of these paths may well have been going back to Roman and all earlier. You know, people tend different generations tend to follow the same paths so yeah so that's one way to come up here but we're going to carry on down chapel gate lots of skylarks out i've got some good pictures earlier hopefully then we're going to turn left so yeah nice cool morning nobody about absolutely brilliant got a little mate of a skylark just flitting ahead of the path for me just see him in the middle there to the left sorry He ain't phased at all. Or she. <laughs> Hello. There's off. This is just one of them never ending. It's not a hard climb, but it just goes on. And on, and every time you get to the top, like that gate, there's another hill. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think we're far off now. I think that post in the distance, and we're at the top. But uh, I've never seen so many skylarks in my life. Brilliant. I think that's Coombs Moss there, and that'll be Chinley Churn over here, and then the Goyt Valley over there. I think. But yeah, get warming up now. The sun's up. Look, it's about three skylarks just there. You can hear them. Four, five, six. That's good to see though. Good to see. Anyway, we're going to crack on up here. I finished my water off. I've got a little bit of water left. Basically, I didn't fill up the <laughs> water reservoir enough. It should have been two litres, but I reckon that's probably about one, one and three quarters or something like that. So that made a difference between having a porridge or not this morning. So uh, I was fueled by Kendall mint cake and coffee, which is the food of the gods. But it just shows how important, because I did take my um, Katadin B3, but the two water sources on the map, both had dried up. 
So, you know, it's always worth carrying a bit unless you're absolutely certain that there's going to be some water there. So, lesson learnt there. But yeah, onwards and upwards and then down, down, down into Castleton. And if I lie, that was that post I saw in the distance. <laughs> Still a bit of a way to go. I can't be far off now. Look at the shadows on there over. I think that's Grandsbrook Nolan. Across there, look, all that uh, clag's burnt off now, but look at those shadows, glorious. There you can see over to, I think that's Sir William Hill Trig over there. Old and quarry. So my last video there with the old penis artwork in the bottom. <laughs> that wouldn't make a bad campsite, you know. I got that I got my eye on that and Bradwell Moore. I also think Chinley Churn would be a good one in the old quarry. So there's a few good sites I've got my eyes on. I'm going to do one or two wild camps a month at most and then still do the walks. But fortunately now my missus isn't working weekends so we can actually get out and do stuff together now which is going to be fantastic. So I have to just balance it, you know, YouTube isn't everything. Look at that, I just took a picture of that. You got, that's Lord's Seat, the Bronze Age Barrow with Winnell in the background. And look, you can see the old cement factory there so we get some stunning views off here they always used to bury these people in the most wonderful places didn't they makes you wonder if that was lined up with Windhill deliberately or just a coincidence who knows but what a hell of a way to bury somebody possibly could have been somebody who uh, was on MAM tour that's an Iron Age old fort but could well be early you don't know do you really no one knows but the people who were there at the time. But yeah, we should get a stunning view as we come over this crest. That's all the climbing done now. Looks like there's a few people up on Mam Tour for the sunrise. I think I got a better sunrise, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, the cracking one over the whole of Edale. But yeah, look at that. Still a bit hazy down in the valley. More skylarks. That wonderful barrow, that in it. I wonder what his name was. But look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning. All those shadows and the mist in the valley. I'm going to stop here, take a few shots of that, I think. You can see there back where we were last night, just about there on Horse Hill Tour, just below the top, looking down this wonderful valley. Stunning. A great spot that. I'd go there again. There's no one there up there. It's a bit marshy to get there, but once you got there, pretty good, pretty flat. But yeah, wonderful. See when it's past there. Look at that, stunning. That'd be a good place for a wild camp too. Never one on the list. Not far from the house either. <laughs> anyway, we're just heading down here, down to the Blue John Mine. And then we're going to cut down past the Tree Cliff Cavern. Past the Speedwell Cavern, I'm going to Long Goose, um, Long Cliff to Goose Hill and back home. The are Mr. Oldham Hiker. <laughs> he doesn't like cows. They're all eat as long as you don't bother them. <coughs> Carry a big stick. <laughs> There's one there, keep it in the shade. Don't blame you, pal. Don't blame you. It's bloody roasting, isn't it? Hey, bloody roasting, too hot, way too hot. Put it in plastic bag and leaving it there when there's no bin mate, just take it fucking home. Yeah, piss heads. Fucking disgusting mate. And then people just pile all their own rubbish on it thinking it's a bin, but well, it's not mate. All right? Home sweet home. Oh, I'm glad to see this place. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to go back and then think about a pint of orange juice, I think, when I do a catch up. <laughs> 